Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Every diocese and archdiocese has what it calls its secret files, or the files in the vault. They are required to have them according to canon law, and very few people in the diocese and the chancery even know about them, the bishop and maybe one or two other people. What is in the files are essentially the private personnel records of every priest who has ever served in the diocese, who has ever presented a <clears throat> problem. It was from these secret files that Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro was able to glean the massive, massive cover-up in the Keystone State of predatory, mostly homosexual priests. The term secret archives is not my term. It is how the church officials themselves referred to the troves of documents sitting in filing cabinets, just feet from the bishop's desks. Now, it would be naive in the extreme to think that all of this just stopped at the Pennsylvania border. This practice of covering up for homosexual predators goes on everywhere in every diocese. Why would anyone think anything else? So if the bishop of any diocese ever discovered, if it was ever brought to him that one of his priests raped, assaulted, groped, made moves on an innocent victim, it's in those files. If it was ever brought to the bishop that a priest, or previous bishop, ever engaged in any behavior that was sexually inappropriate, it's in those files. In short, every bishop knows every victim of homosexual predation in his diocese, and if he doesn't, all he has to do is open the drawers and take a look at his own files. This is why this massive, massive outpouring of grief and sadness and lamentations and agony by one bishop after another, especially the big names in the big places with the big files, is so disingenuous. In fact, it's downright patronizing to the laity. If they're so sorrowful and in mourning, why is it they only get that way when the media rolls up at their door with cameras in hand? Here's what needs to happen for any state attorney general or county district attorney who wants to really make an, a good political name for himself, he needs to raid the local chancery and seize the secret files because there's criminal stuff in there. Every state in America could have a report like this if they looked into it. Is that the case? I think that's absolutely true. I think if there were an attorney general in every major city in America that wanted to investigate this, they would find pretty much the same thing. The story is the same, whether it's Boston or Pennsylvania or Tucson or Los Angeles or, or Ireland, globally. Yeah. Ireland, Australia, Chile, it's the same. The depravity is the same, the criminality is the same, and the cover-up's the same. That's what police did in Saginaw, Michigan a few months back at the home, at the home diocese of Bishop Joseph the Shredder Sestone. According to sources present when the raids entered the property, a whole lot of shredding was going on, caught in the act. Of course, Bishop Joseph the Shredder Sestone is no stranger to turning secret files into millions of pieces of confetti. He oversaw the operation when he was in Philadelphia, according to that grand jury report. So here's the point, too, actually. First, district attorneys had better get to those files before the midnight shredding parties begin. And second, this is why the bishop's apologies to help victims and all of that verbal diarrhea can't really be believed. They could have done all of this years and years ago. They knew about it. The files are right there. They could have done it last month when homosexual predator McCarrick was exposed. Nope, they didn't do a thing. They don't want transparency. They want silence. They want secrets. They want secret files and secret settlement agreements. That's why 1,200 Catholics and counting have signed up for and committed to go to Baltimore for the Silence Stops Now rally at the Bishop's annual meeting in Baltimore in mid-November. Click on the link for the latest information, which gets updated about every week. Catholics who love the faith are sick of the silence. They're sick of the secrets, sick of the privilege and unaccountability of men who do not love the faith, do not care about their souls, who are more hirelings than shepherds. It's only been the culture of secrecy and silence that has prevented most of these men from being in orange jumpsuits or prison stripes as opposed to robes. So come on, your excellencies, open the drawers to law enforcement, hand over the files. 
You say you're all sorry, disgusted, angry, sorrowful, crying, mourning. You want to be with the victims, you say. Never forget the victims. We must always be with the victims, stand with the victims. How come it's only the victims whose stories work their way into the newspaper you seem to want to cry with? End the silence and open those secret files in every diocese in the country. Open them up to law enforcement. Or are you afraid that the evidence of cover-up against you, like it was for Donald Worrell, will be too revealing? You can deal with full disclosure now, or you can deal with it before the judgment seat of our blessed Lord. Open the secret files to law enforcement. God love you. I'm Michael Boris. 